I'm Kara Stutzman. In ACU's first Division I game, John David Baker and the Cats rewrote the record books. And I'm Grant Boone. We'll look back at that Baker's dozen worth of touchdowns and preview tonight's Crosstown matchup with McMurray. It's the Ken Collum Show right now. Welcome into Studio D1 for week two of the Ken Collum Show. I'm Grant Boone, joined by senior broadcast journalism major Kara Stutzman and the coach Ken Collins. Coach, an 84-6 victory over Concordia College in the season opener, in the Division I opener, and fresh off two of the greatest quarterbacks, not just in ACU history, but in all of Division II, certainly Lone Star Conference, Billy Malone and Mitchell Gale. Your first-time starter, John David Baker, goes even better than anything they ever did with seven touchdowns, 11 for your first 11 in terms of scoring touchdowns, just like you drew it up, right? That's right. It's, uh, that's kind of how you draw things up. You know, the, the, the lead-up to this game, a lot of anticipation, a lot of excitement, and uh, we didn't know much about Concordia, mm. uh, you know, but we knew we had to play well. You know, we, th that's the whole goal as far as getting your team prepared. And, and our guys did. It was a beautiful day, a little bit warm in the first half, but uh, but it was it was good. It was a good good evening. Well, not only did John David Baker break some records, but it looked like the crowd could have broke some records as well. The energy in that stadium was just mm. on fire. They even I think in the third quarter did some ACU classic highways and byways going yeah, on up yeah. there. So I mean. Did that change how you were calling the game at all, or? No, our guys, our guys are, our guys are used to used to good crowds. We, you know, we've we've done really well here, uh, and at least in the first half, our 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 crowds are really good. And uh, you know, when guys are out there making plays, offense and defense and special teams, uh, you know, it's a heck of a lot easier to stay engaged in a game. And uh, our crowd did well. Uh, also, we played well, and also our crowd did also, so that was good. It was a Division I caliber right. crowd, That's wasn't right. it? We well, used to it. We will talk more about that big 84-6 to victory over Concordia when we come back on the Ken College Show. Well, we knew going into last Saturday night's game against Concordia College that it would be an historic moment for ACU football. Turns out we didn't know the half of it. With a look back at a record-setting night at Shotwell Stadium, here's Matt Sloan. After months of waiting, it was finally time for some ACU football. The team runs out onto the field looking to claim their first victory as a Division I team. ACU comes out pounding the ball with the land shark, Shark Kendrick West. West powers into the end zone for a 7-0 lead. From there, Jamie Walker catches his first of two touchdown passes from John David Baker and the Cats are up 14-0. Tyler Choppa flies in and blows up a receiver on the crossing route. Everything was working for Baker, who fumbles the snap, then picks it up and throws a touchdown to Peters. 21-0 ACU. Demarcus Thompson then gets his first of two touchdown grabs on a nice back shoulder throw. Concordia was touched by an angel. Lopez stings the Hornet receiver. Then 88 of Darian Hogg's 208 yards came in one play, complete with a stiff arm and six points. Jamie Walker's second touchdown catch makes it 41 to nothing ACU, and it's only the second quarter, still eight minutes to play. Then shades of Eli Manning from John David Baker. Scrambles after shaking off a couple of tackles and finds Hogg for a big game. Then DCH cuts to the outside and flies 54 yards right into your living room for six. 
61 to nothing, ACU at halftime. The defense just kept coming in the second half too. Lynn Grady blows up a play in the backfield. Then Tyler Choppa, in his first career start, gets an interception and returns it all the way for a score. 68 to nothing, ACU in the third. The Wildcats add another touchdown on the ground with Jeremiah Williams running in untouched. The Wildcat front seven kept getting after the quarterback all night long. Here's one of the three sacks. Finally, the Hornets get on the board with a nice touchdown pass on the post pad. Late in the fourth quarter, Desmond Powers registers the fifth interception for the ACU defense on the night and runs it back almost all the way to the end zone. The ACU defense finishes the game with a gang tackle. Plenty of aggressiveness just how they started. And the game finally ends as the clock strikes triple zero. 84 to 6 Wildcats. Thanks, Matt. It was a crazy night, Coach. 84 to 6, the kind of thing you really can never plan for. 84 points, the second highest point total by an ACU team ever. We're talking 90 plus years of football. The other one, you may recall, 93 68. You, of course, were the offensive coordinator for that game, the playoff win over WT. How about this one? 11 for your first 11 in terms of scoring touchdowns uh, in the game on your first 11 possessions. John David Baker, school record, seven touchdown passes. Seven of his 17 completions wound up yeah. in the end zone, and 10 of his 17 completions went to Darian Hogg. Um, I know that Concordia certainly was outmatched in terms of ability, depth, things like that, that a small college is always going to face against a, a Division I team. But uh, big picture takeaway, what were you most impressed about, about your team with all those gaudy numbers? Well, as I see, as I hear you read those numbers, you know, 11 for 11 touchdowns in your first 11 drives, that tells you that we are at least protecting the ball. Mm. The, our operation is going smooth. And sometimes in practice, you can't even get that in practice. And, you know, it <laughs> seems like, oh, my gosh, how are we going to score any points at times? But, but that tells you right there that, that we were operating really, really smooth, really well. John David was doing his job out there. And really the job that he did, yeah, he threw strikes, which doesn't surprise me at all because I've seen it, I've seen it uh, in fall camp. I saw it last spring. Uh, but the thing that he did was keep us into good plays, which, which the, the part of the quarterback, there's so many decisions that have to go on, but even before the ball is snapped, uh, that determine the 11 for 11, or are you going to uh, score eight out of 11 mm. possessions? And whether it's, whether it's a certain matchup in protection or whether it is a certain matchup as far as a route, uh, putting us into the right position. For example, there were times uh, in the second quarter when he didn't do that, and uh, without me knowing it, because I'm on the sideline, I didn't see it. I didn't see it all play out. Uh, he actually corrected it himself uh, the very next drive, which tells me that you know what he is gathering information on every single play. He's learning it, he's storing it, and he's able to recall it, which is which is exactly what you want out of an out of a new quarterback. You played quarterback on a state championship winning team in high school. You played quarterback at the collegiate level on a very good football team at Central Arkansas. So you can appreciate more than most what it's like to not have started a football game, to not have taken what you would term a meaningful snap in yeah. five years since a second round playoff game that John David quarterbacked uh, San Angelo Lakeview against an El Paso Parkland team in 2008. So. As much as he was prepared, as much as he's a program guy, he's been around here a long time, fifth year senior, how impressive was it for him to go out and do what he did? Well, it was impressive. Not surprising, but it was impressive simply because, uh, you know, in a game situation, it's, sometimes it's hard uh, to throw strikes. Sometimes your rhythm is just a little bit off. Sometimes it is a, uh, do I make the decision to give, give the ball on a run or to back up and throw it to a little quick screen, which we scored a couple of touchdowns on. Just everything working together, and, and it, all, it just all lined up last Saturday night, and he ended up doing really well. And uh, I think the, the big takeaway from that is he had experienced guys around him, and that's absolutely crucial. As a new quarterback, you better have some, some studs around you that have been in the fire, that have, been, that have seen the good and the bad, so they can help you through it. I guess more than anything, just one last thought on J.D., just what you said, first time to start a game, I, I, I wouldn't have been surprised had the adrenaline been pumping. Maybe he overthrows a guy, it gets picked. Anything like that could have happened. 
it didn't. You talk about the, the weapons that he had, none bigger than Darian Hogg. He's a two-sport star here at ACU. He's been on some great track and field teams for ACU the last couple of years. He's a sprinter. He's a jumper. And he sprinted and jumped last yeah, Saturday sure night, did. 10 catches yeah. for two bills. He goes 208 and a couple of touchdowns, including, how about this, his third straight game dating back to last year with at least an 80-yard touchdown reception. Right. Yeah. And, and he was a big reason. He caught everything through his way the other night. That's right. You know, the, the first, just referencing the adrenaline deal you mentioned, you know, John Davis' first bad ball, he underthrew a, a hog a little bit. and But the next time we call that very same route, boom, it's a strike, and, and Darian's able to catch it and make yards. And that's the difference. If you want to score points, your quarterback has got to be in rhythm. People have got to be at the right depth because throwing a football is is about rhythm. And uh, that's why defenses always talk about, hey, we got to get the offense out of rhythm. Well, that's more than just coach talk or media talk, and that's legit. And uh, John David was able to get himself in rhythm and those receivers were right where they're supposed to be. And if the ball's not a strike, you're not going to be able to catch it and score with it. You'll be able to catch it and make first downs. Yeah. But what separates good quarterbacks from great quarterbacks is just their consistency for which they get those guys the ball where they can catch, tuck, and go. And that's exactly what he did. Beautiful deep ball down the near sideline oh, right in front of you. How great. That was you awesome. had a good view. Yes, it was. And yeah. right, before, right before the play, I said over the headsets, all right, after this play, I'm going to be able to tell you all whether we're going to be able to run by this corner. <laughs> and it was just a conversion <laughs> route, and he ran by him on that, that play. Great. Yeah. Um, just one quick thought about receivers. Uh, you've got some great veteran guys, Hogg, Taylor Gabriel, Daryl Cantu, Hartless. What that means, of course, is that in coming years, you're going to need to get some new guys in. So the ability to get a Monty Green Avery, a Drew Peters, a Milton Roberts, a, a Cade Stone, to get them reps in a game and have them catch balls, I would think uh, with only Demarcus Thompson coming back next year in terms of experience, guys, yes. I would think that'd be important. Oh, it's critical. And that's what, you know, as you're, as you're trying to win games this year, you're trying to put yourself at the same time in position to – to grow those guys up as much as you can uh, because they're the future. I mean, you're going to need them during this transition. And, uh, you know, we're grinding them in practice. They're responding in practice. But, like we just said, it, 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 the game's a little bit different. When you put those silk yeah. pants on and yeah. the lights come on, it's a little different feel. And you just got to be able to see their poise and their growth and what, how do they respond to a missed block, how do they respond to certain things, and that's how they grow. By the way, those pants and the jerseys and helmets looked awfully good under the lights at they Shotwell nice. the other they night. Were really nice. By the way, 84, great number, yeah. Six isn't bad either. Your, t your defense only allows one touchdown, five takeaways. What do you think about the defense's I thought they I thought they played with passion, and that was the number one thing I was asking. And uh, the quarterback was live for the first time since last fall. You know, the, in the spring, the quarterback was not live. This fall camp, hey, stay away from the quarterback. In fact, run away from him if, if you if you spring <laughs> if you through value your life. That, yeah, that's yeah. that's right. So they were able to get after that quarterback. And he was good. a good. He had he some sure skills. Was. Now w there were some breakdowns in our in our rushing lanes, and that allowed him to, to to gain some first downs and some rushing yards. But for the most part, I mean, five takeaways versus the offense zero ta zero turnovers. Uh, that's that's really 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 good. Uh, our our corners played well. Uh, our linebackers, I thought they ran and hit really really well. And our and our guys our guys up front compressed the pocket. Just we've just got to work out staying in rushing lanes a little bit better this week. One of those corners, Tyler Choppa, with a pick six, a 31 yard touchdown return, and he also later blocked an extra point. That's right. Big Jesse Harper rumbled and stumbled yeah. into the end zone. Uh, to take back for a two-point defensive PAT. Big night for your team. Congratulations on that season opening win. When we come back, we'll head up to the JMC Network Sports Desk to check in on some of the other ACU teams in action. So stay with us here on the Ken College. Other sports around campus, here's Matt Sloan and Sheer Numerowski with the JMC Network Sportscast. Welcome to the JMC Network Sportscast. I'm Sheer Numerowski. The AC Wildcat cross country team kicks off their season with a meet in Abilene this Saturday. Junior Daniel Block 
will be running in his first meet for ACU this weekend. We caught up with Daniel to hear about the changes he's tackled so far and what this season holds for the runner. Uh, I feel like I have a lot, of, a lot of strength. One of my strengths is my kick and my speed and just the, the determination in an 800 to get that extra few steps on that guy down the home stretch. I mean, I feel like I could kick a pretty strong 400 at the end of a race. I mean, it is a lot longer than an 800, the 8,000, but um, yeah, one of my strengths is my kick and my speed, so I think that will, that will benefit me greatly. The volleyball team went to Lubbock last week to take on Texas Tech. Although they lost three to nothing, they feel good about their progress and head coach Kellen Mock has seen some things in the tape that would lead them to believe they'll do better in future matches. We've got to get more production from our outsides. Our middles did great and our right side Corey Reader really stepped up for us, but that's one position on the court where the block that they were able to give us, um, our outsides weren't comfortable swinging around that big of a block and so I've got to make some changes there. Volleyball looks forward to hosting Texas Tech this coming Tuesday after a loss earlier in the week to the Big 12 school. Senior Madison Robinette talked about what the team learned from the game at Tech, as well as what ACU can expect this Tuesday from our Wildcats. We're really excited. I don't think we're discouraged at all. I think we are uh, really just, we're on a very positive note right now. We, I've been telling people today when they ask how the game was, I was like, we stayed with them. We will do better next week because we'll be more comfortable in our own gym, our own fans, uh, and so, yeah, we'll be good. Sophomore defensive back Tyler Chapa had an excellent game last Saturday with an interception return for a touchdown and a block extra point. Sharon Numerowski caught up with Chapa to talk a little bit about his performance. Play for me to make a play, and it just so happened he threw right to me. Was, the only thing I was thinking was I better catch this and I better score. Yeah, that was my first collegiate interception for a touchdown, so... On the way to the end zone, I was just thinking, like, this has got to be real, you know, like, this is, this is real, I just did this. No, you never really look to make a big hit, it's just, you, if you're in the right position at the right time, everything's going to happen for a reason, and um, as a cornerback, we're more of cover guys, so we're not the ones to make the big hits, it just happens that the receiver was defenseless, and I kind of just came and cleaned him up. Uh, football's a great game, uh, it teaches you how to be a man basically discipline responsibilities and it teaches you how to be a family with everybody else and I feel like at a collegiate level I mean it's the best sport I've ever played and it's just great to be out here with all these people well football is not an individual sport um, there's 11 guys on the field so it's kind of like if, as long as everybody does their 1 11th on the field then you're always going to come out with a good game Watching the JMC Network Sportscast, I'm Sharon e. Morosky. And I'm Matthew Sloan. Join us again next week. When we get back, we'll take a look at some scores around the Southland Conference and preview tonight's game against McMurray. So stay right here on the Ken Collins Show. Back on the Ken Collum Show, and you're looking at scores from last week in the Southland Conference. Coach, there were eight FCS teams in college football last weekend that defeated an FBS school, and one of them was in the Southland Conference. How about McNeese State taking it to wow. South yeah. Florida from the American Athletic Conference, That's the old Big, Big East? Yep. Scored, what, 52 points? Yeah. Wow. 52-21, big yeah. blowout. That is. Yep, and uh, we're going to see those Cowboys before we know it. That's right. Coming we'll be out. ready for them. Okay. Well, Coach, tonight you guys play McMurray, and you played them last year in your season home opener, but they've had some changes this year, including a new coach. Now, how is that, um, or what do you expect to see from the Warhawks tonight? Well, we know this. There's a lot of an, uh, excitement leading up to this game for them because it's game one, uh, but for us also because it is a crosstown rival game, and it's, I think it's good, it's good for Abilene. What we expect from them, uh, I don't know that we'll expect all the fake punts and some of the things that they did last year, and, and, and that kind of helped the game get out of hand. Uh, it, was a, it was a well played game for a while uh, last year, so we expect nothing any different 
they're going to throw the ball. We know that, and they're going to move really fast and uh, try to wear our defense down and make us just come up and make little piddly tackles over and over. That's just what those offenses do, and they're really good at what they do. They know what they're doing. They can throw the football as, as well as anybody. Uh, so offensively, our 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 defense our defensive guys have got to be ready to go up and uh, make tackles for four quarters. Offensively, they're gonna they run a couple of uh, defenses and, and a couple of uh, a couple of variations of each front and uh, mainly one safety. So they get after the quarterback a little bit. They like to blitz. How much they're gonna do some of that stuff? We don't really know. They've got two uh, different coordinators, so. Uh, we figure they're going to bring the same bring the same schemes, but every coordinator is going to bring his personality, little different nuances to the offense and the defense. So uh, I know this: they're going to come out fired up, and uh, it should be a good ball game. It is McMurray's first game of the season they That's had right. last week off. You mentioned Mason Miller, the new head coach. You've gotten to know Mason a little bit, and he's a how mummy guy. I mean, played for him at Valdosta State collegiately. Uh, as a player and then coached with him. He's kind of been with Hal pretty much every step of the way. This is his first game as a head coach after being the offensive coordinator. So you can appreciate, can't he, uh, can't you, what not only he's going through as a first-year head coach, but also what McMurray's going through because it's kind of what you guys are doing now as a team. Sure. And Transitioning. Yes, and for them, uh, you know, for Coach Miller, uh, I could I could give him advice and uh, but most of it he wouldn't hear anyway because he's so busy dealing with all the other head yeah. coach and stuff. But uh, it'll be it'll be interesting for him on the sidelines. At times he'll feel lost. He'll feel like he's all right. What am I doing? I need to call <laughs> plays or I need not. That that is all part of what I've gone through. And but you know what? I've got I've got I've got two. I got an offensive coordinator, a defensive coordinator, and a special teams coordinator. All of them I feel like are studs, and and that makes you feel really really good. Uh, as a head coach, and it, it, it makes it makes life a lot easier. Really, throughout the week, game day is is stressful on everybody, mm -hmm. but throughout the week is when they is when they really help our football team. Well, not only does McMurray have a brand new head coach, but they also have a new quarterback this year. Have you gotten to see any video on him and kind of feel him out a little bit? No, he played a little bit last year, but we have not we have not seen any video on him and. Uh, but I do know this, he's going to be able to get the ball out quick and he's going to throw strikes. And because if he plays for McMurray, which is what they do, they, that's what they require in their quarterbacks. And so I, I don't know, you know, how well he runs around, things like that. We don't really know. His, his tendencies, we don't know. And, but we do know this, they're going to try to get people open and he's going to be able to hit them. He did play in 10 games last year, backing up the great Jake Mullen, who was a terrific quarterback for McMurray. And Brady Lambert, the new quarterback, he is a winner. He won a state title on the 3A level at Wimberley. He was a linebacker on Alito's, one of Alito's state championship sure. team the, the, the yep. year before that. So he's a tough guy. Yep. So that tells you about his mentality. There you he's go. a competitor. And he'll be, he'll be like, you know, ACU, whatever, let's, uh, you know, Harden Simmons, whoever it is, Texas Tech, he's going to roll out and, 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 and compete anyway. Uh, Coach, uh, just one last thing as we wrap things up here. Uh, Tonight is going to be Pediatric Cancer Awareness Night, and the P4X Foundation is going to be uh, front and center. And, of course, P4X, for, for folks who may not know, is, is named in honor of the great Rex Fleming, our 10-year-old friend who lost his battle with uh, a brain tumor last November, the son of Lance and Jill Fleming, our, our dear friends. And so a dollar from each ticket sale is going to go toward the Rex Fleming uh, Endowed Scholarship Fund tonight. Some of the funds uh, from people at lunch at the Bean on Friday uh, will go toward the P4X Foundation. You guys have the decals on your helmets, the little ribbons that say P4X, as do all the teams, McMurray, Harden, Simmons, all the high schools. Uh, and, and on a very serious note, we love to, to kid Lance, but this is a big night out at Shotwell, isn't it? Oh, it is, because Rex was awesome. He was a part of everything that we do. He would be at our practices. He would be in our locker rooms calling plays that's right he's called a he's called a play a successful play <laughs> here before so uh it, it is a big deal and you know the the fact that we're honoring rex mm. is pretty cool it is. because he was it, what a what a neat kid what a courageous battle and uh, pretty good parents pretty good parents yeah, especially good the parents. mom oh yeah <laughs> mom mom's quality well p4x <laughs> began as pray for rex and then now of course it's play for rex and all the area teams will be playing for rex all throughout the month of September, which is Pediatric Cancer Awareness Month. Well, it should be a big night at Shotwell Stadium. Big crowd expected. ACU taking on McMurray. 
The ASU Alumni Association throwing a huge tailgate party tonight. So get out there early for that. The kickoff is at 6 o'clock. The pregame show on the radio and online comes your way at 5.30 p.m. Lance Fleming and I will have the call for that. For Kara Stutzman and for the coach, Ken Collins, I'm Grant Boone. Enjoy the game tonight. We'll see you at Shotwell, and we'll see you right here next week for another edition of the Ken Collins Show.